What's up you guys? Welcome back to UFloor, the channel bringing you tips and tricks to help you with your next flooring project. Now today we're out at some duplexes that we had purchased a while back and one of the tenants is running into an issue right here. This is one of our section 8 tenants and when they come by to do the inspections this right here is a no-no. You can't have spindles missing right there or a child could fall through or whatever and I, this is my first time coming in and taking a look at this so I'm just like being told hey these spindles need to be filled in right here but when I looked up at the top I was like well there's nothing to attach them to the, the thing stops right there so I'm gonna have to tie these back in there's one missing down there I'm gonna have to replace that that I'm just gonna cut out of a 2x4 make it a 2x2 but up here I'm gonna have to make these 2x2s as well but I also bought a handrail to splice and put into there and we're gonna bring it up and tie it into this area right here all right guys so here we are I took a look at the way this thing was and I was explaining to Kelly that in my experiences generally the steps fall on a 40 degrees sometimes a 38 degrees so when I came over here to take a look at this I put my angle finder on it let's go see if I can get that where you guys can see it real good nice and good uh, you see that this is 45 degrees when I'm usually making something that's at 90 degrees, I, t I use 245s to make that turn. But when I want to do an octagon, in order to turn that 90 degrees in three pieces, I had to cut that 45 degrees in half. That's 22 and a half. So you would make here, you would want to make your thing come down, cut that angle on a 22 and a half, and you'd be right in, your, right in your pocketbook. Now this is not going in a 90 degree angle. You see what I'm saying? This is basically, looks like... Um, 22 degrees this is going to be a lot of figure on how to get this up because in my experience like i say it's but it's 40 degrees and i was going to kind of try to come in and see what it would take to get that uh that little quarter turn right there so i'm just going to have to i was never good at math but it looks like i need to get good today we have to figure this angle out anyway i'm going to jump on my saw and do a little trial on here and see what works here and works the best when i'll figure it out i'll report back to you guys all right now as I said it's supposed to be on a 40 degree angle but because it's not and they cut it on a 45 I was telling Kelly I think that down at the bottom the spindles are probably shorter than the ones at the top and sure enough the ones at the bottom were 30 and a quarter the ones at the top were 33 and a half so my plan of doing what I wanted to do it's just not going to work so as you can see when I set this level up right here the top of the bread loaf and that's what they call it is a bread loaf because from the end it looks like a piece of bread the top of it is going to go way past up there not allowing me to come up because see this should be at an angle like right here and then I should quarter turn it up and into that thing but since it's not we're gonna have to do something different we're gonna have to bring it up and dive it out where it stops out here turn it back and then quarter turn it back into that right there that's the only way we're gonna have to that's the only way we're gonna be able to make it work and so that's what we're gonna be doing today so if you got something like this going on at your house don't follow me unless you're somebody who ever built your steps built them wrong like this and built them on the 45 I actually had a guy tell me that he goes I know how you build steps you measure up to the top of the floor and then you measure out that when you make them like no dude you'd be like you're walking down a hill that's not how steps are made you got to have a 10 inch run anyway, we're gonna try to fix this and I'm gonna show you how I tackle that and get this situation squared away and get this and get it put back together all right guys I actually went down and cut this on a 45 degrees and I, it's just really a makeshift to find out how long I actually want to make it I'm gonna make it to the top so I'm gonna bring this up here my little 45 degree thing I'm gonna set it up there right there what I'm trying to do is and then I can set my bread loaf anywhere in here you know what I'm saying so I'm gonna go right here that way it all fits in there so what I need to do is make sure that across here that's where uh, that's where it gets cut off so I wanna I'm gonna say it's like right in somewhere right right in there and I think that'll maybe a little lower yeah right there would work perfect all right so what I need to do now is I need to go down and cut this on a 45 degrees I'm gonna go ahead and make this up like makeshift to make sure it's gonna work because I, I hate to do all that and it doesn't work so I'll be right back so I'm back and it dawned on me when I was down there I was like see you know you can't cut a 45 and then run that into a straight with two miters because what happens the 45 is longer and it'll 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 end up sticking like this right here see at the bottom you might be flush on the top but you'll get that action at the bottom so since this is a 45 degrees and I'm literally if it was straight and I was turning it up it would be 90 degrees but from here it's a 45 degree so in order to get that 45 degrees cut in half to make that turn I cut it on a 22 and a half degrees yeah. and I'll show you what I mean this side is a 45 bam it looks good 
but you're looking at this right here it's on a slight angle so if I was to put just a regular board on here like that it, it, this would be longer so I cut this on a 22 and it goes like that so now all I got to do is basically do a 45 degrees from here back to there install this bread loaf what do you think about that all right I'm gonna go downstairs get that cut and test it and see how it works and then I'll be right back All right, guys, those of you who've been with me, you already know what time it is. It's time for that CA glue. That's right. I love using CA glue, especially on projects like this, because this is not permanent. But just so I can get an idea of what it's supposed to look like, this stuff holds my wood together pretty quick. Now, in order to get an accurate measurement of the last piece, I'm using my level as a straight edge. And then I'm just using my tape measure to gauge it. My, I must have did this the other day. It says five and five sixteenths. I actually made that five and a quarter because I thought that was the number, but five and a quarter will work. But anyway, this is about how it would go if you're putting it in. Now, you can see that I am like way past over there where that goes. Now, by making a template, I'm able to hold this thing up and see exactly where it's going to be pinpointed to the center. I'm a little bit long here, but if I just take a little bit off the middle piece, like say a quarter of an inch, I'm sure that this bread loaf will be dead center. Right, so the first cut is going to go like this. <clears throat> These bread loaves, you know, it's bigger on this side than it is side. So you really just need to make sure you're rolling it in there and getting it flat against that. It'll rest against this. I like to let the blade stop spinning so I don't come up and chunk out the top of this. Now cutting all these pieces up took quite a long time. You guys already know what angle I'm cutting them on, so I'm gonna go ahead and knock it out. And once I get the pieces cut, we'll go inside and glue them up together. All right guys, so we got the burr sanded off and I'm ready to glue this up. So this is gonna go like this right here, all right? The way I like to glue these up is to do little CA glue in the middle and then glue my outer part with the wood glue. The wood glue is really strong. Not saying that the CA glue wouldn't be, but when you're gluing popular and pine, it's been my experience that if you don't let that set for at least a couple hours, it's not that hard to break that bond with that CA glue. But the CA glue will hold it temporarily like vice grips while this sets up and, and dries. And I'm telling you this right here, look here, it says, fast set time, stronger than wood. Stronger than wood? What? Yeah. If it's stronger than wood, I'm using it. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put that CA glue in the middle, we're gonna glue the outside, and you'll see. Because otherwise you'd have to nail it or you'd have to clamp it up and you'd have to sit here overnight and come back and work on it the next day. And we ain't got no time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. With, I tell you what, let's go ahead and start with the wood glue because the CA glue is it's basically super glue so it starts drying on its own anyway but once we put the accelerator accelerator on it it'll play it's, it's done all right here we go you can see I got a pretty pretty generous amount there on the outside I don't care if it squeezes out and you know, I can clean it up this stuff is water-based so it cleans up with water and uh, I'll go ahead and give you a warning. I've said this in other videos, but in case you haven't seen those, if you're one of those people that uses your fingers to sign in on your phone, do not get super glue or any kind of glue on your fingers for that matter because you ain't checking your balance for a couple days. All right, here we go. Super glue, bam. Cyanoacrylate, and this is called Autobahn. Now, my favorite CA glue to use is the Bob Smith brand, but uh, I wanted to be able to test some of these out and see if any of them worked any better than other. And this is called Autobahn, and it's made by uh, the miter, the people who make them. They make this too, so they have a CA glue, CA glue with this label on it too. So uh, <clears throat> it's whatever you want to use. So I'm gonna set that right there for a sec, and I'm gonna get this one sprayed up right here in the dead middle. And you guys will see what I say about fast setting time. I'm gonna soak that thing in the middle. I'm not worried about it getting around out there, because like, it doesn't mess with the wood glue. So right here, we gotta line this up perfect. I'm pushing. I'm pushing real tight. Now, generally, it only takes about eight seconds for the CA glue to set up. 
And I'm just going to hold it for a little bit longer because uh, I got wood glue on there too. And I don't need no issues, not today. I want to get in and get out with this. You know what? When it squeezed out the top, I think mixing the either CA glue or that accelerator with the wood made it look like Gorilla Glue. So maybe we made Gorilla Glue today. We don't even know it. All right. I think that's good. I mean, just to clean up. Yeah, that's harder to rock right there, whatever that was. Check that out. It's like a little rock. Huh. It's hard. It's very hard. You guys can see the glue dripping, and as I stated earlier, this stuff is water-based, so it cleans up pretty good. I like to keep a sack of wipes on me. It makes for easy cleanup. But the rest of it is the same. I put wood glue on the outside, CA glue in the middle, and just glued it up. I'll let you guys watch from here on out until we get finished. So this is going to get glued and nailed down here and that's going right there. Well look at that. Now I will admit, I will admit this, we could have been a little bit more strategic and tried to bring this angle up to the top of this so that it looked like this but that is in like dead center top and bottom of where it's supposed to go. And I do things the way it's supposed to be. This ain't going to be up here all the way to the top. Are you tripping? I'm not tripping today. So we did it right. Sorry it don't match, but I don't do it wrong. All right, so that's what we got, guys. And you can see I got like, once I line this up dead perfect down there, look at that. I got like about three-eighths on that side and three-eighths on this side. I'm happy with that. I'm going to nail it. I'll go ahead and get it nailed and glued up there. I think what I'm gonna do is come through the back with some three and a half inch screws. Actually, I think I do have some four inch G -R GTX, whatever those things are. Those things are pretty, pretty awesome. Now I'll be using an 18 gauge brad nailer with inch and a quarter brad nails. I also sanded the post and the bread loaf down to raw wood. That way when I use wood glue, it's wood to wood. I don't want to glue wood to paint. She's installed. We'll let the glue do its magic and do the rest, you know, for holding that up. And I, I, I imagine it's going to do a great job. Plus, I'm going to put some spindles under here. That'll ho hold it up, too. And I'm going to put a screw through the back of this one. But that's pretty much how we're going to do it. Uh, if you guys want to stick around and see me install these spindles, I'll do that. But other than that, I just want to show you how to get this banister up here so you can get it tied in and get these spindles in. Because that's, this is step one. All right, guys. If you enjoyed today's presentation, go ahead and hit that like button for me. I really would appreciate it. It's helped the channel grow tremendously. And also, if you like projects like this, floor and stair related, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and make sure to turn on notifications so YouTube lets you know when I put those videos out. All right. That's going to do it for me on this one, guys, and I hope to see you on the next one. Till then, take care. Stay safe. Peace.